we all know and we've seen um, the power that the arts have to transform lives, especially young lives. And we know that it is significant. And we know how important art is in a young person's education. It really helps to set a solid foundation for learning later on in life. And, 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 and th those scientific studies, they show time and time and time again that if your, your youngster gets involved in some kind of theater, visual arts, music, or dance, that on average they score 18 percentage points higher in math, science, and English than kids who haven't had those same opportunities. And that's, that's why we're here. Uh, for us, the graffiti art programming, uh, sure, art is fun and it's recreation, but our end game, our bottom line, is all about education and all about supporting the education of the young artists that, that come to our classes every day. One of the ways in which people were sort of slaughtered en masse were in churches because people would gather there as a point of community and they thought the church being sacred, no one's going to dare attack them in a church. So what the militia groups would do, they'd wait till these churches would fill up with people and then send in these young militia groups and the armies to slaughter the people. And a lot of these areas are sort of famous massacre sites. There's one in particular called Nerbuye, in which I think roughly 9,000 people were, were killed in this church. In 2009, I was filming a documentary there for about five weeks and recording an album. And I went to, to visit the place and I got special permission to go out back and see all the bones that they had kept of all the survivors, roughly 9,000 survivors and go through the tombs, just, just as a reminder. And you walk through the, the church, and the floor was still sticky from the blood, even though it was about 14 years had passed at that point. So we did a, what we thought would be insignificant, but turned out to be a very significant thing, is we brought music back to the church and the community. We took the musicians that we brought here from Canada and gathered a local choir. And what we did was we sung and performed Amazing Grace over and over and over again throughout the night. And at first, it started out very, very somber, as you can imagine, given the context you're in. By the end of it, by about, I think, about two hours of singing the song over and over, the whole community had come in and were dancing in the space, completely joyful. Music had reclaimed not only the physical space, but the inner sanctum of each person in that community. And once that healing takes place, then you have a good basis to give formal education. And then you can rebuild the country. You know, sometimes people say to me, wow, I'm so overwhelmed by the horror of Congo and the atrocities, and it's really difficult, and who am I? I'm just a poor college student in central Pennsylvania, Penn State. What can I possibly do? I don't need status, power, privilege. Who am I, and how can I possibly make a difference? And I come here, and I see this art, and I think this is how you make a difference. It's this. You use your talents. You use your skills. You use your voice like Nelson has done. You, you, you take your love of poetry, or maybe it's a sport, right? You find a way to incorporate that, to raise awareness about Congo. And we all can do things, as Steve was saying too, on a small scale or a large scale. You can pick up a picket sign, you can call your senator, right? You can also create art, write a poem, blog about Congo. The point is that each one of us has a talent and a skill. So it doesn't have to be about money. Yes, the money helps. <laughs> We're happy to, you know, take those checks and help Dr. McQuaggy realize his vision in the hospital. But it's not just about that. It's also about engaging. And it's about human rights, and it's about understanding our commonalities and not just our differences. And not just thinking about Congo as a place that's dark and horrific, where every man's a perpetrator and every woman's a victim, because it's not the case, right? There are beautiful things happening in Congo. It's a gorgeous country, and there are healthy families and healthy relationships, and parents going about their raising their kids, and there are beautiful things that are happening there. And what I worry about sometimes when we talk about Congo is it ends up being too dark and we only hear about the bad news and not about the good news. Let's take something that's painful and tragic. Let's take the hope and the strength and the resilience of the women of Congo that are 
depicted here, and let's turn it into something powerful and something good. So let it tap the best in you, and let's share that with each other tonight. And then let's go out there and let's make a difference for the women we talk about. So thank you, everybody, so much. Really, really